What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly Reef Talk. And today I'm gonna to tell you what changes I'd make to my sump if I was setting up again today. Now, if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4 p.m. UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's get to the sump. The sump is now more or less settled and unlikely to change much. And I'm generally very happy with it, but I wanted to let you know what I'd do differently if I was to start again today to give you food for thought if you're setting up a new tank. So first up, I'll quickly run over what equipment I currently have. I have an Innovitech X-Filter 1.0 in place of the standard filter socks. And below that, I have a Jekod DCP 4000, which powers my manifold. I also keep two 300 watt Shago titanium heaters in there, as it's a relatively high flow area of the sump. Then there's a large refugium section powered by a Luxbird Par 38 lamp, which grows Cheeto as well as any lamp I've ever had. And next to that is a bank of four cooling fans that are connected to a heating controller. I also have a couple of kilos of live rock underneath all of that lovely Cheeto. Or Cato if you're not of an English persuasion. Then we have the world's largest skimmer and an Eheim UV steriliser that runs off the manifold. And somewhere in the skimmer section is a red-legged hermit crab to mop up detritus. He does a decent job by the way. Then in the return pump chamber we have an Ecotech Vectra L1, a few bags of Ciparax Media and a bag of activated carbon that I swap out as often as I can be bothered. And finally in the cabinet we have a Kamoa X4 Wi-Fi doser with two TMC dosing containers for ATI Essentials, a DDP1 single head doser that takes care of iodine dosing, about a million plugs in two plug tidy boxes, all of the controllers for my various pumps and the essential battery backup that powers one of my Vortec MP40s in the event of a power outage. So what would I change if I started again today? Straight off the bat, I'd change the way I installed the automatic filter roller. I decided to buy this after having the tank for just under a year, so I had to remove the filter sock section from the sump while it was in place. The easy way to remove baffles in a sump is to use dental floss, a guitar string, or something else you can jemmy between the two panels of glass. You then wiggle it down to break the silicon and the glass will slip off nice and easy. But with the sump in the cabinet, I couldn't create the angle for that, so I used a fine knife which, well, didn't really work. So I ended up breaking half of the glass panels instead of delicately removing them. It's basically what you'd get if you asked Jeremy Clarkson to do the job. So the moral of the story is you should probably either remove the sock section before you set up the tank or drain the sump and remove it from the cabinet to give you better elbow room. That's a bit of a hassle, but it'll make the job a billion times easier. Now I'm not a fan of filter socks, changing them is yet another job that you could do without, and as a result mine ended up looking like a vet's forearm. And an automatic filter roller is an absolutely fantastic bit of kit in my opinion, it helps keep nutrients down, which allows you to keep more fish, and the water in my display tank looked noticeably clearer within hours of setting it up. So if you're setting up a tank, find some money in your budget to get one, and thank me later. Next up is the plumbing. All I would have done differently here would be to fit a couple of unions. One on the return pump pipe and one on the manifold pipe. They're simply connectors that you can unscrew easily to remove sections of the plumbing and having a couple of those would have made it an absolute cinch to remove the return pump and manifold pump for cleaning. Because I didn't do that, I haven't cleaned either pump which means they won't be running anywhere near as efficiently as they should be. While I'm on the return pump, an L1 is total overkill for this tank. I had intended to run the manifold off the return, but that's difficult to do because of the location of the plumbing, which means you'd have to plumb a tee off to go around the overflow pipes all the way to the back of the cabinet. Not impossible, but a bit too much of a faff for me, and I suspect most people. A Vectra M1 or even S1 would be fine for this tank in my opinion, and would save you a bit of cash and space. Next on my hit list is the skimmer. It's a NIOS Quantum 220, which is rated for tanks up to 2,000 litres, and my tank is just 400 litres. Now, while I do like to oversize skimmers, I suspect a 1,000 litre NIOS 160 would do more or less the same job and would take up significantly less space. Seriously, this thing is like the Titanic, and it makes accessing the back of my sump a real pain in the behind. While I'm at it, the skimmer section is also far too deep for this skimmer, which means it needs a stand. So I'd probably think about getting a recirculating skimmer instead, because they don't care how deep the water they're in is. And that's about it. I don't regret ditching the stock freshwater reservoir, it's too small to last more than a week, and it gets in the way when you want to get your hands in the sump for maintenance. And everything else is doing its job, and keeping my tank looking reasonably decent. Now at this point I should probably tell you what my nutrients are like and this might surprise you. Despite all of that filtration, having 26 fish means my nitrates are currently 20 parts per million and phosphate is 0.12 parts per million. Now many of you will be thinking that's far too high for an SPS tank 
and I generally agree. If I could press a button to set nutrients, I'd have nitrate at around 3 parts per million and phosphate at 0.03. But my corals have never looked healthier than they do at the moment, and growth is really solid. So I don't plan on bringing those levels down at the moment, but if I change my mind in the future, I'll use a carbon source to do so, like Nopox or Bacto Balance, which is fairly inexpensive and won't take up any more space in my sump. So there you have it then, that is what I would do to my sump if I was setting up again today and hopefully that's given you a little bit of food for thought if you're just setting up. If you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday's video and until next time, happy reefing.